Sir, when's your birthday? January the 1st, 1893, is when I was born. Hmm. Who is your father? What did he say? Who is your father? Well, it was J.C.C. Blackman. John Calhoun Calvin Blackman. Hey, today is October 2nd, 1984. And this is Joe Todd and Bernice Jackson, and we're interviewing Mr. What's your first name? Ezra. Ezra Blackman. Okay. Who is your mother? Florence Blackman. Mm -hmm. Florence Brown, however you want to say it. Mm -hmm. How long did you live in Texas, in Sherman? 17 years. Mm -hmm. What made you decide to move to Oklahoma? Well, I come out here and I like it better than I did there. And what year did you come? 1910. Do you travel by train? Yes, I have pass on the railroad. I was working on the railroad. Mm -hmm. What kind of work did your father do? He was a mattress maker in an upholster. Hmm. Did he have a shop there in Sherman? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you help him there in his shop? No, no. He was one of them hot-headed Irishmen. He didn't have enough patience to get a kid to work. <laughs> <laughs> so did you go through school at Sherman? Did I go? I yes, went sir. to seventh grade at Sherman. Seventh grade. I went to eighth grade out here. Hmm. How old were you when you came to Oklahoma? 17. 17. What made you decide to come up to this area? Well, my grandmother was up here. She filed on a quarter or South Street. Mm -hmm. What was her name? Hayden. Hayden? Her name was Blackman, but she, uh, her, my grandpa died in the Civil War. And she married to Hayden. Mm -hmm. What was your grandfather's name that died in the Civil War? Henry. Henry, ever hear any stories about him in the Civil no, War? No, I don't know much about the Blackwood family. Yeah. I don't believe the Clancy's ever ever did welcome into the family. Mm -hmm. You know, some of these outlaws are a lot better than in laws. <laughs> uh huh. So, did you move in with your grandmother when you came up here? Well, I come up here to see her. I was a call boy on the railroad, got a pass to come up here. And I liked it so much better out here than I did there that I just quit and stayed out here. My grandmother sold out and left in about a year after I come out here. Where did she go? Where did your grandmother go? Where did she go? Yes, sir. She was all over Ableburg, but she finally died in Bessemer, Alabama. Mm -hmm. So when, when your grandmother sold out, did you buy her place? No. Where were you living when you came up here? When you well, I've come up here to visit her. I was living with her when I come up here. Mm -hmm. Then I worked all around. Everywhere I worked, why, I was like a chicken. I picked for a scratch. <laughs> what kind of work were you doing? Anything I could get to do. Mm -hmm. Pulling broom corn, anything, harvesting. Hmm. You pull brim corn then? Oh, yes. How do you pull brim corn? Well, you just take hold of the corn and the boat and pull it out. Did you never see the broom corn pulled? I've seen it growing, but I've never pulled it. Well, there's four brim corn and there's standard brim corn. What's the difference? Well, one grows way up high and you have to table it and cut it. The other, you pull it. Mm -hmm. That's all the difference I can see is all root and corn. And then you worked on wheat harvest also? You worked on wheat harvest also? Oh yes, I worked on wheat harvest. What'd you do in wheat harvest? <laughs> Fish wheat out of the box. Enter box. Shut mm -hmm. <coughs> <coughs> that door in there, what you I'm about to call? Not the door. When did you first 
learn of the of the salt in this area? I don't know. I come up on the south side of the river over here horseback and seen it. I think in 1910, but I'm not sure of that. Mm -hmm. It well, was quite a sight. Pretty near everybody come over here to look at it. How, how big was the salt field? How was that? How big was the salt field? How much salt was there here at that and time? And how deep was well, the it's salt? It's just exactly like it is now. There ain't no difference. Where's the salt come from? Out of the ground. It just the ground. It's only 30 feet on my, this place here to salt. And the water comes in that picks it up and brings it to the surface. Hmm. And then the water evaporates? The water, that, well, you, you've got, well, I have a brine stream down here that's two miles and a half long. I took salt out of it 12 inches thick. Mm -hmm. oh. With pitchforks and scoop shovels and every other way. How long has there been a salt mine here? Well, there wasn't none here when I come here. If you can call mine a salt mine, why you just it'll be, be, it'll be me. What gave you the idea to start mining salt? Well, I lost about four straight wheat crops and I went in debt and I had the whole salt fed back. What year was that? Well, I started in salt business in 21, I think, hauling salt. Mm -hmm. Where'd you haul it to? Well, the furthest I went was to Belvedere, Kansas, with horses. And I went up on that railroad north of Greensburg. Mm -hmm. I hauled it all over everywhere and sold it. Did you haul it out by a wagon? Yes, I did. I had six head of horses on one wagon and four on the other. How much could you haul in one wagon? Well, it varied, but uh, I think the big load was about 9,600. What kind of horses did you have? Oh, all kinds. Kind of uh, making different me what color it was or anything else. As long as they pull the wagon? Yes. Mm -hmm. I happen to be a horse trainer. Oh, you trained horses? Yes. Well, where did you train horses? Just right where I was at, wherever I was at. If I had a horse, I trained him. Mm -hmm. hmm. What breed do you like the best? Oh, I don't know that. All depends if he's was going to use cattle, well, I'd take a quarter horse. Mm -hmm. But if he's going to farm, well, I'd take a draft horse. It all depends on what breed of horse it is. Well, did you file on this place, or...? No, I filed up in the pasture up there. I see. I bought this down And then there. you bought this. The party that sold it to you probably thought they was getting rid of a, a bad bargain. No, I don't think so. You don't think so? No, I don't think so. I bought the bank land. They would just be like this right here. Yes. And then you bought this. What? And then you bought this, this salt plant. No. We're getting a little ahead of your story because okay. when you own the bank land, you own the center of the river on all non navigable streams. Oh, yes. And that way, whenever you buy the bank land, I own three miles and a half up and down this side of the river and two miles and a half over there. I see. And I had 3,590 acres when I sold that. Uh -huh. And I never did. I paid eight dollars for this right here. The cheapest I bought in it was five on it, but I bought a thousand acres for a thousand dollars. Oh, that's marvelous. Well, but it didn't grow grass. And it no. didn't grow wheat. But it grew salt. It grew salt. <laughs> it's been a lot of college-educated people that wondered how I could make a living, and it's a lot better than it was on the other. Mm -hmm. In 21, when he started hauling salt, what was the price of salt? About $15 a ton if you got it as far as Belvedere up in North Core. Mm -hmm. Here at about 
pile, all you could pile on a wagon was bottom bed for a dollar and a quarter, and all you could pile on sideboard for two dollars. I bought it and then resold it. There's a man here selling the saw. Mm -hmm. Who are your biggest customers? Well, ranchmen. Ranchmen? You. Yeah, I knew a lot of people. When I lived up there. I told you I farmed up there southeast of Coldwater. And I knew a lot of people, and I sold a lot of salt. Mm -hmm. But them would help me to straighten out. How many people did you have to hire to help you? Uh, oh, that yourself? all depends. I, at one time, I had 32. 32 people? Yeah, 26, 20, and 16. But the most generally, way back there, just one person. Mm -hmm. Didn't have no money to hire them. We were right down on us with you. That would be about when? In the Depression well, days? 21, I'm not sure there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anywhere in there. Mm -hmm. hmm. How would, how do you dig the salt out? Well, I took it up with a pitchfork right on top of the ground. Now. How thick was it? Anywhere from nothing up to 12, 14 inches thick on a long drought. When the rain come, it took it all out. You had to just get it back there then and dry with it. Mm -hmm. Now then, today, they, they won't take, they won't lose their salt down there the way Cargill was working, the way I was working. You have brine pools, and as long as it's submerged under that 10.2 water, now, I don't know whether you know what 10.2 water is, but it weighs 10 and 2 tenths pounds per gallon. The rainwater weighs 8.33. That's the difference in the weight of salt water and rainwater. They call it 10.2 water. So you didn't, when did they first put in the brine pools? I put them in. I couldn't tell you exactly when. Mm -hmm. I put in a little one down there with horses. <coughs> now, what advantage do you have with the brine pool? Well, if you didn't have one, you wouldn't have anything. If you had a brine stream down there, and you couldn't. It's too boggy to gather anything with the machinery. And I made and. And, and made a machine that'd pick up more salt than a hundred men would pick up. What kind of machine? Salt gather and pick it up. Well, can you describe it for us? We don't know it. We don't know what and, you're talking about. All right. The whole way around with it now, why this machine picked up the salt and elevated it and put it in a truck. <coughs> okay, The I guess the analogy I can draw is this machine that picks up hay and puts it on a truck. No, it ain't nothing like that. Nothing like that. It's, there ain't anybody that ever looked at it and wondered what it was. Can you describe it for us? No well, it put in there like two... Uh, it made it flat on the bottom so that it couldn't pick up the dirt. Mm -hmm. And then it is in a V shape. And it's like two runners, like two drader blades, but it was just flat on the bottom. And you'd tear that salt loose and then shove it over and push it in, throw it over in the box and elevate it up in my tr truck. I see. I saved a lot of labor too, didn't you? Yes. Mm -hmm. We had a Dutchman. It, we had a Dutchman up here, John Schroeder, that run this store up here. It all fell down. And he went up the store one day and he said, they tell me you're going to throw the pitchfork and the scoop shovel away and just pick it up and put it in the truck. I said, that's right. He said, it's got a seat on it. I said, yes. And it's got ice cold beer in front of the driver. <laughs> and I was as strong a man again beer as you could ever see, but he was strong for beer, so I threw that ice cold beer in front of the driver. <laughs> you just threw that in. <laughs> but now, the whole way around with it, why? Did you invent this machine, this I method? don't want you to call it. I made it. You made it. Mm -hmm. They still use it? No, I don't use anything anymore. I mean, do the people here, do they no, still use it? No, they'll never use it. How come? They, you, they go so much bigger and faster. 
Cargill Vidyers. Uh, the two engineers that come over here from California, I went out there to visit that plant. And one of them met me in San Francisco, and he said, now, you're not to go to a motel at all. I'm taking you to Kenny's place, and you're going to stay half your time with Kenny, and then you're going to stay the last day of a minute, and I'm going to take you home. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go with you. We're going to have to go down to L.A. and change plane. We'll get a plane out of there, and I'll, I've got a car in, in Oklahoma City and take you home. Now, uh, his main boss come back here with him this last time, about two weeks ago. And he wanted to know me about the guy, what I thought of Guy. Well, I said, I can tell you in a mighty short time, Guy's idea is entirely too big for me. Mine's entirely too little for him. But I said, I'm back him 100% on anything. Now, who is Guy? Well, he's the engineer out there in that salt plant. <laughs> but the next to the top man. Mm -hmm. But his boss come with him. That's what he wanted to know what I thought of Guy. Mm -hmm. Now, Guy will change some of his ideas before he gets through. Some of them ain't going to work. You know that <laughs> from experience. <clears throat> but then he'll make a success. Mm -hmm. And you sold out then to these Cargills. Yes. Cargill bought it out. Bought it out. Mm -hmm. Four young men bought me out, and you might know two of them. They were Barbies. Which they lived one? right out in the flap out. Yes, what's their first names? Greg and, and, and Brad. Yes, I know them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Two of them was uh, Barbies. They bought you out? Yes, and they sold out the car then. I see. How long did you haul salt by wagon? How many years? Well, I bought a Model T truck in 27. And I never did haul them more with a team after that. Mm -hmm. Then your main customers were still up at Coldwater? Were oh, they your main I customers? Sold it anywhere I could sell it. I even hauled it down to laundry and sold it down to laundry and water. Never ever, ever were. I hauled sold every direction I could sell it. How did the depression affect your industry here? It is depression made me more uh, people was hard up and they'd come in there to buy salt and take it out and resell it i finally quit going out on the road all together and just sold it here so you did good in the depression yes i did i did better in it and, and it did good did mm -hmm. what about the dust storms oh it was you could count them in the layer of salt Salt was so thick you'd count every dust storm in, in that layer of salt when he took it up. Mm -hmm. How thick would that layer of dust be? Oh, it just darkened it. I couldn't tell you. It'd just be a streak. You'd just see a streak. Mm -hmm. Just a dark streak. You still see those streaks now? Out in the salt? No, when it rained, it washed it all out and took it down the river. You couldn't see nothing out any more of it. Where did this salt come from originally? Where, how come it's here? Well, y'all will just tell me that the whole country from Amarillo, Texas to Hudson, Kansas is underlaid with three or four hundred feet of salt, way down deep. You can build a salt plant right in water, you can build it anywhere. You, there's plenty of salt, but it takes several million dollars to put a concrete shaft down to it and hammer it. Mm -hmm. It'd be, it. It's too big for most people. Where this was for a poor man here. Mm -hmm. I tell you, I come here in debt. And uh, that way, why well, I had to work it out. Hmm. And what year did you sell out? What year did you sell out? Well, they started them trying to buy them in be four years ago. Four years ago. You mean you've run this salt mine all these years? Yeah. Well, good for you. They even married a woman who lived with her 55 years. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
Did she stay here and help you and work with yeah. you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the, the whole way around, she had a college education, and I could give her the speed of any motor. It goes through any amount of gearboxes, pulleys, or anything. And she could tell me how fast it'd be running just mighty quick. Well, she was a good company. Yes, she was. And now I tell you, the neighbor, sure, nobody ever seen her out of humor. Nobody ever heard her speak crossword that I could find. Yes. And they give her all the credit. Mm -hmm. But I tell them it takes a good man to keep a woman in a good humor that long. <laughs> well, you were pretty well suited to each other. Sure. And you made a go of this. And so we were much. both Christians when we were married. Good. That's great. I'm glad to hear that. How many children did you have? One. One. We lost three. Oh. But we saved one because she was 16 and she died. This end picture up here is her over there. Oh, yes. Well, she's pretty girl. Very pretty girl. How did World War II affect? How did World War II affect the operation here? Hmm. They were only out of business for over six years. How come? Most, most of me. How come? How come the wheat farmers threw them out of business? I had as good a lamb as anybody ever laid out of doors, and they penalized me more than a bushel of wheat was worth. All wheat farmers all understand that. They took a year to do it. But the salt people took one day and I shut down on the wrong day. And they busted me. I went broke. Why'd they do that? I, I'd rather, if you're going to take my belief of it, I don't know how why, but I'd rather say they're glad to get rid of me. Oh. Well, now, as long it? as you're taking the sun and the wind, they couldn't put you completely out of business. But I had a steam plant. I, I would have been a multi-millionaire today if it hadn't been from being, they busted me. Was what that during that? the war? Did you asked me in the World War number two, that's yeah. what it was. Huh. Was it government regulations on the yes, wheat? Yes, it is, a government regulations. Mm -hmm. On the wheat? On all on, of it. On all of it? The salt people made their laws and Roosevelt just had a rubber stamp and eat it. Now, you may be a Democrat and high for Roosevelt. I don't care what's your politics. <laughs> well. But I voted again the old devil said four times, and then they do me really good. He got in anyway. You got in anyway every time. <laughs> well, what about World War One? Well, you, you weren't in the World War. I. Yes, I was. You were in the first World War. Him? He come out. There was no radio or no television or no nothing. Yes. Just handbills, mm -hmm. billboards, and the newspaper and the word of mouth. Mm -hmm. Vote for Wilson to keep you out of war. Mm -hmm. I voted the first president was a Democrat. Mm -hmm. I voted for him. Mm -hmm. He declared war before he was inaugurated the second time. That's and you I, had to go to the And they give me a ticket to the Army. Whereabouts did you serve? Well, I was in three different camps in, all, in these states and never went across. Oh, you never went across? No, I never went across. Where'd you take your basic training? Most of it in Alabama. Alabama? Tell us about your basic training. How'd you like it? Well, it wasn't bad or nothing like that, but then my wife won't know what I thought of it, and I said, well, I wouldn't take a thousand dollars for what I learned, and I wouldn't give ten cents to learn any more of it. What'd they train you to be? A mess sergeant and a cook and this and that. And, that. <laughs> and that's what you did? Yeah. You were cooking the war? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, made cakes four foot square, and cooked 600 biscuits for breakfast. Well. Hmm. Were you responsible for going out and getting all the food that you had to cook for the soldiers? No. Who did that? I don't know that, but it's issued to you. Hmm. How'd you keep your food from spoiling? 
How did you keep it? Had ice in my ice box. One refrigerator like this one here with a big drilling pound cake ice. That's where you kept all your meat and milk? Yes. Mm -hmm. One egg was uh, 80 cents a dozen. Well, we was getting hours and armor for 20 cents a dozen. It was about six years old. They weren't very fresh. Then. How do you keep eggs for six years? Mm -hmm. You will have to ask them that question. They kept them. <laughs> you have to ask them that question. I can't answer that one. So what did you do on Armistice Day? What did you do on Armistice Day? Just like you did, just sat around. Did Wasn't nothing to do but to listen to them. You didn't go out and celebrate when the war ended? No, I never have celebrated on that day. After Wilson got us in war, did you become a Republican? I don't know. No, not then. Mm -hmm. No, I didn't. I was registered independent for a long time. And there was six in this county that was elected on a Republican ticket and they had no opposition in a Democrat. This county was pretty much solid Republican. So I re-registered Republican to vote for them six people. Mm -hmm. And they announced the difference between a Democrat and a Republican. They've traded every plank in their platform in my lifetime. Everyone, at if, if certain times, Democrats have believed the same thing that Republicans have, and they use vice versa. <coughs> but it's a lot of difference between a liberal and a, 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 a conservative. What is the difference? Well, can you define what they, what they mean by liberalism today? If Russo, if, uh, if uh, Webster knew what they call liberal today, he'd turn over his grave. A liberal is a socialist or a communist. I don't care what they say, they vote that way, they live that way. Now, they'd come out with an oath and tell you, no, you're one. They won't admit it, but the, nevertheless, they are that. Now, I can say one thing for Reagan. Roosevelt packed the Supreme Court, put in six liberal judges, and they've almost put the law on the penitentiary and turned the criminal loose. And the last time that when Reagan appointed this woman a conservative, why, that Ferdinand got it to where it's pretty hard for him to do much. And there's four of them judges alive yet, and they're getting pretty old. And it don't look like the Democrats picked anybody to be elected this time to me. I don't know nothing about it. I'm not a politician, but, but it, it just don't look like they picked anybody to be elected. If Reagan can point one more, it will be a balanced with the conservatives. And if he can point two more, it will be a conservative Supreme Court like it ought to be. My sister-in-law, my wife's sister, studied evolution over here in the Freedom High School. Mm -hmm. They tell you to support the colleges and this and that, but you have to find out which what that college is putting out. Or you're allowed to be supporting what you don't want to. Now, we went on back in Ohio and come back to Chicago at the World's Fair, and we stopped in Columbus, Ohio, at a zoo. And we had a little Model A hoopy with a trailer back of it. My wife and daughter and my sister-in-law and I. So I took my wife and daughter around. We couldn't lock the car up. It just had a kind of boogie top on it. Somebody had to stay with it or somebody would steal everything we had. So Ethel stayed with it. So it started around. I told her about this big chimpanzee. And oh, she sure wanted to see it. And she's showing me all the lines in its face, just how you resemble it. 
went on telling them, I said, Sister, your folks might have killed that old sucker, but mine didn't. <laughs> mine never killed that old sucker. I said, there's a creator, and there's no way to have a creation without a creator. You know, there's no way to have a creation without a creator. How in the world could a man put the moon up there and the stars and do all that? You know there's got to be a supreme power above us. That's right, I we agree. know that. I agree with you. And the whole way around with it, the churches is slipping awful bad. They're slowly slipping mighty bad. I can tell you one thing, the Salvation Army does more good for the poor than any church I know of. I belong to Methodist Church. And I, I have donated at least something above $70,000 the last four years over here to build on the church and apartment. So I'm a pretty strong Methodist. Mm -hmm. Well, you said you went broke in, in 20, 20, 20 was it, 21? Did no. During the World War, number two. Number two, you went broke. Uh, what did you do to make a comeback then? Did they, with all these government regulations, how did when you When I manage? went broke, they, they was going to foreclose me, but there's no way, there's no way to six years, from Pringle Fall over six years, that if I made a ton of salt with steam, I had a steam plant out there. Mm -hmm. I went to penitentiary and anybody sold me the oil or anything to make it went with me. Mm -hmm. So there's only one thing, that was just to deed it over to the mortgage company, saving the expense. Mm -hmm. No way when you got that long in time, no way to pay no interest or nothing. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, why, they come down there and made a deal with me to dismantle this plant. And I was to have what was left if it paid the debt off. And I got it down close enough that I could see I could sell some land and I'm about to lose my mineral rights. But Jim Selman loaned me the money at 5%. I met Jim over in the pasture and he just got off his horse and said, I'll write you out a check. Mm -hmm. I'll loan you the money. Well, good. No, no, no nothing. Mm -hmm. Now, Bob wouldn't do that. But his mother and his father would. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether you knew Jim and his wife or not, but then. No, I don't think I knew them. Then that's what really saved you was. Well, uh, they owned it all. Everything went. Mm -hmm. Oh, everything went. Mm -hmm. But then I was deep in debt. Mm -hmm. But Jim was selling them loan me money to start back in business. Mm -hmm. And I bought it back. Oh, well, good. Yeah. And you've been prospering ever since. Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. And I would say I did pretty good. I was 52 years old, deep in debt, didn't have nothing. Mm -hmm. When everybody retired, I started then to make mine. Mm -hmm. I sold this for a million and a half, and the time they pay me, why well, it'd be two million better. Is that right? And then I sold another farm over there south of Freedom that's been bringing men anywhere from $17,000 a month's gas check down to 600 And my wife died four days before I got the first check of $18,000. Oh, my. All the hard times we had, she never seen no part of it. Well, but God's been good to you. Yes, he has. And you've... Uh... And I've had a long, healthy life. Good. And uh, you have it now that you're, how old are you? Well, I'll be 92 if I live for the first day of the year. You don't have to worry about five In other months. words, I'm 91 years, mm -hmm. nine months and two days old a day. How old are you? Oh, you, you're not supposed to ask me that. <laughs> I'm telling you to the day how old I am. You got to do a lot of figuring to get you. <laughs> nope, I don't. I'm 38 years and four days. Well, I, 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 what, what, when were you born? 1946. I know, but what month? September 28th. December the 28th. September 28th. 
Four days ago. Four days ago? Well, you can pretty well get yours figured out. <laughs> but mine's on January the 1st. I don't take the calendar and tell how old I am. Mm -hmm. Right to the day. Well, this million and a half that you sold for, what was your taxes on that? You mean how much taxes I had to pay the government? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a sixty-four dollar question. You haven't got it settled yet. No, it'll be <laughs> ten years before I can find that out. Oh. They paid me seven hundred and fifty thousand. Mm -hmm. Now the land taxes is not so bad, but it's this. Well, I made four leases right here and got ninety-eight thousand and eighty-three. Oh. And uh, the whole way around with that big gas well over there, that put me in where I. The government takes 50 cents out of every dollar that I make. Mm -hmm. But with the land taxes now, when, Ru when Reagan went in, it was 50-50 on, mm -hmm. on a deal. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and he changed it to 60-40. 40 percent is all the tax on the land anymore. Now then, with the gift taxes, when Reagan went in, they could only give my nephews a thousand dollars without paying the gift tax. Mm -hmm. But at the end of ten years, there won't be no gift tax. And right this last, just right, well, the checks ought to be in the bank now. I ought to get them back when I get my statement. Mm -hmm. But I give my nephews another thirty thousand, which made seventy-six thousand dollars a piece to eight nephews. Well, you're a great uncle to yeah, have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, now, I give a lot of donations. Yes, I bet you have. And the whole way around with it, I've sold everything. All the land that I own, I have a lot in the Freedom Cemetery, and my wife, my father, and my daughter buried there, and it's just room for me. Mm -hmm. That's all the land I own. Mm -hmm. And I ain't trying to buy no land or I ain't trying to do nothing. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought of uh, moving to town? No. You like it here? This is where it Now they home. give me, they, they own this house. I don't own it. Uh -huh. But they give me a written permit to stay in it as long as I want to. Mm -hmm. Is this the Cargills? Yes, Cargills is. Mm -hmm. Is this where you and your wife has lived all your life? In this house? No, not all of her life. Well, more. Well. What do you, uh, you, you think you're learning to cook in uh, World War One is what's helped you to live a long, long life? No. What's that? Living the right kind of a life. And exercise? And then another thing, my people got a lot of longevity in the family. Uh -huh. That's supposed to help us a lot. I think it does. Uh -huh. But then most of it is the right kind of living. Mm -hmm. You never drank, smoke, or anything? Yes. You did? Yes, I drank and I smoked both. But I was so little I didn't know no better. When I got old enough to know better, I quit. My mother died. That's my mother up here on that picture up there. Mm -hmm. Here. The south wall. Yeah. She died when I was three and a half years old. Oh. Childbirth. Mm -hmm. And my father lost his mind. And I never come into this world on no silver platter with a gold trim. All he wanted was whiskey, beer, chewing tobacco and smoking tobacco and you go downtown buy dinner for 15 cents. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's no milk or no bread in the house. Mm -hmm. And if the neighbors had enough fed us and clothes us, we'd have starved to death and froze to death. Well, that was in Sherman, Texas. Yes, sir. Well. Now then, the whole way around with it, I made up my mind that if I lived through it, mm -hmm. there wouldn't be a drop of whiskey in the house. If it, it'd be bread and meat in the house and everything and, and not a drop of whiskey. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you right now, my wife never worried about me becoming home drunk. 
She didn't have no idea exactly when I was going to get here, but she knew I'd be sober when I got here. Yes. You didn't tell us your wife's name, maiden name. Alva. Alva. Alva May. Alva May. What's her last name? Swain, if you want her maiden name. Mm -hmm. Where did you find her at? Right over here, south of Freedom. South of Freedom. We met when was, she was sweet 16, but we never got married then. Oh, you didn't. Well, where did her folks come from? They come from up in Nebraska. Mm -hmm. But so, she rode down in a covered wagon all the way from Madrid, Nebraska to over there in 1901. Well, do you remember any of the stories that she told you? Do you remember any of the stories oh, that she no. told you? about her trip she was young enough she didn't know she much didn't. about that trip mm -hmm. now she never could get a birth certificate because she couldn't get nobody up there to get it well and birth certificates i'm about to need a passport to go over to jerusalem and i've got to have a birth certificate and i have it well you can get a delayed birth certificate you just think you can. If you can't prove anything, you can't. Uh, you go to your school records. Hmm. I'll tell you right now, she tried every way in the world to get a birth certificate, and she never did get it. Well. She used my social security number, and mine was A and hers was B. Yes. But she didn't have no birth certificate. What school did she go to You graduated? You said she was a educated woman. Let me tell you about her education. Okay. Her mother and father were both school teachers. She lived right south of Freedom over there. Mm -hmm. Five years without a school nor house nor a teacher. At eight years old when she come there. Mm -hmm. And her father and mother taught her. And she went to school to a paid teacher 22 months and took the examination again Woodard and Moreland and all them towns and made the highest grade in Woodard County. Well, good. Then she went to college at Alba. Yes. Now she started teaching on the eighth grade. Mm -hmm. and I had a, a mighty good education up to the seventh grade and then I went to school to her brother. Mm -hmm. Now then, I bought the schoolhouse and married the teacher. <laughs> Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, if you can beat that when you're going some. Well, I married the clerk of the school district where I was teaching. Well, I can tell you right now, my wife and I never had no troubles whatever. That's great. Mm -hmm. she, she didn't always agree with me, and I didn't always just wholeheartedly agree with her. But there was no disagreement. Mm -hmm. After World War II, then, uh, when you got on your feet, everything, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> went fine for you. You began to make money, and you've been making money ever since. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Mm -hmm. uh, what can you tell me about the early day town over here of Freedom? Do you, when was it founded? Do you know? Yes. There, when I went away to the Army, there was no railroad there, no nothing. Freedom was five miles north of where it was at. Mm -hmm. And when I come back from the Army, well, the railroad had got up to Freedom. Mm -hmm. It wasn't up here yet, but up to Freedom. Mm -hmm. And the head brakeman had to open my gate on every farm. There were no fences. And the back brakeman had to close the gates to come up to Freedom. Oh, is that right? When I was freedom on this highway? On the railroad. Well, but you said it was five miles north. Of oh, where freedom it's located. five miles north of where Would that make at. it up on this highway uh, 64? It'd be two miles north of it over there because when you go around the Camp Houston, this, the highway is right straight east to right here. I know it. Oh, it is. When you get down to Camp Houston, you're yes. just exactly straight east to my mailbox right Is that right? Mm hmm. And that's where Freedom was originally. Freedom was north up there. North. Five miles north. Old Freedom was north of New Freedom. Yes, that's what I mean. Why did they name the town Freedom? 
What? Why do they name the town Freedom? Uh, you, you, you'll have to answer that one. I don't know that. What, what is Camp Houston? Well, it's just uh, over here at a filling station. They call it a pit stop now. They always call it the Camp Houston Oil Company. Camp it's Houston right Oil Company? right on the highway there on the junction of 50 and 64. <laughs> but uh, the, the man now that owns that station over there calls it the pit stop. Well, now, how many, uh, when Freedom was five miles north of where its present location, uh, how big a town was it, and how many stores, and so on? Well, there was two grocery stores and a blacksmith shop, a delivery barn, a hotel. Mm -hmm. Not a motel now, but a hotel. Yes. I can't tell you this all. I'm trying to think just how many today. Uh, there's two grocery stores in the old freedom. Mm -hmm. Are there any signs <clears throat> of the old freedom? No, not okay. nothing. Nothing. Not anything there. Mm -hmm. Well, how many miles is it from Camp Houston down to freedom now? Three. Three. Then the old freedom was north of Camp Houston. That's right. Two Five miles, miles north. Five miles. A half mile east. Well, well, uh, then when the railroad came south of Freedom, of course that destroyed that little town and it moved to the railroad. They just all moved right down to Freedom. Mm -hmm. and how big a place is Freedom now? How many? Places? I really don't know, but it must be about seven or eight hundred. Uh, I, I've lost out on the population of freedom. I, there's been a lot of people moving into it. Mm -hmm. And I, I may be wrong on that. Yes. Well, can you think of anything else to tell us that we've missed? I don't know what you want to know. Everything. <laughs> how does the... How do they mine the salt today? The Cargill people. They're going to take it up with these elevating strippers and bring it up here in the water. Cargill right now has run the floor out here for a building that's 150 feet square and six stories high. I ought to be able to see up on the highway. Mm -hmm. And what's that building going to be used for? To process salt, hmm. block it, and make table salt and everything else. They're putting in a real salt plant out here. I think I bought one of the biggest things in this neighborhood that's probably come into it. Mm -hmm. I think so, too. I really do. Yeah. Now, uh, there was a question I wanted to ask you. When it comes a flood down the river, and you said it would wash the salt down the river. They're in the old brine stream, but not in these pools that they're uh -huh. making. Yes. If it's submerged under six inches of water, <coughs> You can float There's two different weights of water. If there ain't a lot of wind, you can float the water off. I see. And if, of course, if it's a big high wind, why, well, of course, it'll mix it up as the rain falls. Mm-hmm. Now, that's what it'd be. Well, now, is this the beginning of the Great Salt Plains to the east of us? Well, the Great Salt Plains is over east of Syracuse. Yes. This is the Big Salt Plains. The Little Salt Plains is up the river for near the state line. Oh, I didn't know that. And you've got seven places in Oklahoma where salt crops out on top of the ground. Yes. And in Germany, they locate oil around these salt domes. And it's here all around these. Mm -hmm. Look over there at Cherokee, how many oil wells they got all around. Mm -hmm. You couldn't point your finger in no direction five miles without being within a half a mile or a mile of an oil well, mm -hmm. sitting right where you're sitting. Exactly. Yet they've never drilled on me right here. Well, well then, the, this salt plain is, has no connection with the salt plain. No, no, it's two different things. Mm -hmm. two what different. river is this? What? What Cimarron. river? Cimarron. That over there is on the salt fork. Mm -hmm. And the one up in Kansas. 
What? And the one up by the Kansas line. This one's Emerald up there, too. Mm -hmm. Well, does this river ever flood? Oh, yes, it flooded. But them was widest this here, about three miles wide. You you look out there, and, uh, right out there, when you get over that, right before he's over the railroad track, you think it's level, but it drops 16 feet straight south to the river. Is that right? And the river itself drops seven feet to the mile. The Cimarron River, if you take out the Eagle Knife Lake in New Mexico, mm -hmm. I don't know the elevation of the prong that went up in the Colorado, but the elevation of Keystone over here. Mm -hmm. They take the entire mileage between the two mm -hmm. and divide it up. Well, now, most of that fall is on the mountains. Mm -hmm. The big end of it falls in the mountains. Yes. And it's seven feet drop. It's to seven the feet to the mile. Well, that's but, interesting. But the big end of the fall now is out there, not here. Yes, I There ain't much fall here at all. No. Hey, a lot more fall going south of the river. Well, now, you you wouldn't have any ducks or geese here because they wouldn't like to drink your salty water when they in the fall. You don't yep, have until they built the lake over to Cherokee and built the one down the west of Wood, mm -hmm. over by Supply. Mm -hmm. The ducks and the geese come in here by the thousands. Oh, they do? But when they built them lakes, they can see. And they light right over there. They don't light here so much anymore. Mm -hmm. But the ducks and the geese come here by the medium back there. Did you ever go hunting? Yes, but not very much. Not very much. Didn't you like wild goose? Well, yes, I eat it. Mm -hmm. But I just leave somebody else to shoot it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very much on the hunting. Mm -hmm. I've got a nephew and my brother was hunters and fishermen. Mm -hmm. I got a picture of fish right down there. It weighed 664 pounds. Where did you find that fish? Well, it's, they've mailed it to me in the postal card. Oh, you? <laughs> yeah, hand me that stuff. I want to show you a fish. Where, in here? Yeah, just take that out. Just bring it out on top there. No, 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 just lay that down. I'll send them envelopes. Let me have them, all them envelopes. Okay. Oh, yes, I see it. That is Put a fish. Put these back in there. Okay. It's a Jew fish. They don't seem to eat them. Is that your brother? No. No. What kind of fish is it? A Jew fish. It says on this other side it weighs 664 pounds. Mm -hmm. Look at that man in the back of it over there and you can see how it's... What kind of wild animals did you have here in the early days? When you first took this place over? And did not make any more, no more than they are now. There was a coyote and a bobcat. Mm -hmm. You didn't have any mountain lions or...? No. No? I never did see one anyway. Mm -hmm. No, there's none here that I knew of. Now, they, these uh, bobcats was here and the coyotes here. Mm -hmm. And rabbits. Oh, yes, we had millions of rabbits. Mm -hmm. And quail. Yes, there was quail everywhere. And prairie chicken. Yes. and. There, there wasn't no wild turkey here in the early days, but there's a lot of wild turkey around these trees now. I noticed as we came in, there aren't too many trees around here. Is that because they, the soil isn't conducive for tree oh, growing? Oh, no, there wasn't no trees in this country at all in the early days. Must they had to be planted on the, around these creeks and streams for water. Mm -hmm. You just never did plant any? Huh? You never did plant any? I never what? Planted any trees. Planted them too right out there. Oh. Well, can you think of anything else now? Mm -hmm. 
I don't imagine you had any fish in your streams here, did you? Now, when the river gets up, the floods, the fish goes up the river. And I've had to come down my line for the life. Took a trout out of that. It's 14, I mean, a bath. It's 14 inches long. Well? Weighed a pound and three quarters. But uh, they, they, if they get caught down there and don't get back, why well, then the salt water kills them. Mm -hmm. Now, there's a minnow that lives here. Yeah. And it lives here all the uh, way around. Mm -hmm. Now, with ripples, believe it or not, there's a little spring-tailed bug that lives down there. It's come out west of Edith. That's a little town that used to be down there. And they said it was the only thing that could make its living 12 months out of the year on this salt plain. That's the only thing I've ever seen that could make it. What town was that? Edith. Edith. Where was it? What? <clears throat> Where was it? Two miles and a half east of here. Mm -hmm. Down right down the railroad. Yes. And how many stores did it have? Oh, they had two grocery stores. Well, they had a elevator. Oh. And they had a bank. Mm -hmm. And they had a, a section crew. Mm -hmm. Man. Visible man here a while back and born in the old sex now. Oh, is that right? He's well, got five boys now, that weighs over 200. Well, what about uh, what happened to the town? Well, it, it just disappeared. It didn't away with it. Mm -hmm. Just like everything went. Everybody went to bigger town. Now, the postmaster over here at Freedom and the Mail carrier don't seem to think it when we went into that highway 60, box 96, that we wasn't going to lose the Freedom Post Office. But uh, you just watch and see. Soon after the election, it's liable to happen any time tomorrow. I'd sure hate to see Freedom lose their post office, but it looks to me like they're getting close to losing it. Well, it's a big enough town. It wouldn't, I don't believe it would lose the post office. You can believe that all you want to, but whenever they come around, you don't never get so big as somebody else ain't bigger. I was bigger. Morgan was bigger. You don't never get so big if they ain't somebody else bigger. <laughs> can you think of anything, Joe? Yeah, did the Indians ever come here to get a salt? Yes, they come here to get those crystals. They took them for medical purposes, but I don't know what kind of medical purpose it was. Mm -hmm. hmm. One time, this old Indian goes to that pageant every year up there to, oh, in Kansas, uh, well, town between here and Wichita. I can't think of it. I'm trying to medicine law. Yes, medicine law. His wife and daughter come and was gone. Gonna go down on the river. All oh, the blackest cloud is coming up you ever seen. And I said, Chief, you go up there and tell my wife that you're gonna stay all night with us. She'd be afraid of me. I said, She ain't afraid of no Indian you ever seen. She ain't afraid of you no more than you are of her. And I said, y y I, I, I'm gonna get caught with this team, but you can make it up there in the car. And oh, it really flooded. And I said to these two Indian women, I said, I want you to cook an Indian supper. And I said, if you, anything that we've got that you need, well, we'll get it. But I don't want out of doing the cooking at all. I want you two Indians to cook it. Mm -hmm. And they had a little bit of Indian boy, and they had a coal stove with them that looked like eyes and glass. They took that little thing and pumped them. That nigger woman, uh, that Indian woman said, no, no, don't never touch that again. She tried to pay me, and I said, heck, I can buy it for a nickel and put it in there myself. And so the whole way around, why, uh, that little boy minded her better than most white children. And they spent the night with you? They spent the night. Mm -hmm. And what happened to your salt in this flood? Well, it washes down it the river, washes. but it makes again. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay, it keeps coming back. Yes, but when you put it in pools, like I tell you, it won't wash away like yes. that. Yes. 
Cardell right now has got enough tools that they're going to make. Well, they're picking on putting 22 semi-trailer truckloads a day out of here. Oh, how deep is this layer of salt? It's on top of the ground. I know it's on top, but it has to go down, don't it? No, it don't go down into the ground now, all above the ground. You put the water in there, and the water just evaporates, and the salt settles. And they put in three and a half inches, and then drill it, and now they're making a crop of salt on top of that. Hmm. That's how, amazing. How big was your brine pool, the one that you built? I had about 40 acres. 40 acres? Yeah, and I could have, that 40 acres would have made 40 more. But what happened, then after all that happened, then the Army engineer come in here putting in a dam down there just a mile east of my land right here that would cover this warehouse building up out here with water. For 23 years it put me under water. I quit the salt business and started over and quit and everything else. Finally, I just decided that when they moved off of me, I decided to, and I borrowed 199000 to put in the vibrating screen and conveyors and stuff to put in the plant and sell it. Mm -hmm. And I got a chance to sell it, and I sold it before I'd done anything. Mm -hmm. I wrote a piece of poetry about the early day. Maybe you'd want to read it. Yes. Yeah. I don't know if I can find it right quick or not. You ever see a fish that big? <laughs> No? I never did. They say on earth that my, my, my niece says they should be. I don't know why it wouldn't be. It'd be pretty short, I mean. <laughs> What's that you said? What did he say? Can't tell how far a total jump to you punch it. Why don't you read some of your poems? What? Why don't you read one of them? No, I'm trying to find the one I wanted to.
On one of my trips to Carl's machine shop, I met quite a character named Jack Ray. Rutledge told him of my salt and salt water just a few miles away. So you have salt water on your farm. Do you have enough for Woodward County or the state? I replied, millions of barrels, enough for the United States. How heavy is this water? 10.2. How pure is this water? Analysis 99.82. Couldn't be better. It's hard to get. Why don't you tell the people you have it? Too old to fight, too stiff to run, so I don't argue with anyone. I got in a car and contacted truck tank companies near and far. To my surprise, they opened my eyes at 15 cents per barrel. My sales began to rise. 10.2 salt water is totally saturated. 26.6% salt, 42-gallon barrel weighs 428.4 pounds. Each barrel contains 118.95 pounds salt. 100 barrel contains 11,395 pounds. When it is snowy, cold, and a strong north breeze, trucks start hauling for antifreeze. 10.2 salt water at 50 below is still a liquid and ready to flow. Down 3,900 feet, lost circulation, came to a stop, moved over 100 feet. Used 10.2 from the top, no cave in. They drilled straight through the trouble spot, set their casing without a flop. But when they hit a gasser, they move faster for the extra weight of 10.2 and the good work it will do. Nine transports hauling to Putman, Oklahoma, 100 miles away, took $351 worth in just a part of a day. Now, I never owned an oil or gas well, but they only pay one-eighth. My $40 salt water well beats that. It pays eight eight. <laughs> That's cute. When I awake and look up the road at a long line of transports all lit up bright, it's then I realize old Santa's all mixed up and come before Christmas night. At night, they come to my bed by a window with speed, give me the information I need. Pump on a land of water. Pump on a load of water. Oh no, they are not peeved. They think, lucky old fella, he's asleep when we leave. Selling salt water is no work, so there's no use to shirk. Just pleasure and fun. Old salty black. Well, I can't find the one I wanted. I wanted one about the other day in Oklahoma. I finished a pool by moving the earth, put in 10.2 salt water, took out $70,000 worth of salt crystals, so sparkling white and pure that it made the salt sales fast and sure. To evaporate salt water, I used the wind and the sun. In this way, the fuel cost no money, no money. Made a salt picker faster than 100 men. So I am now ready for the salt business to begin. Something to think about. 
At 65, quit work. It's time to shirk. This statement is not true. There's plenty left to do. Move to town. Just eat and lay around. Fat will create around the heart. Soon from this world you will be part. Well, that's true. <laughs> Go to the ant, thou sluggard. Consider her ways. There is plenty of get up and go left in her today. When we cease all activity, we give up our hold on longevity. Just a kid, nearly 79, could not waste his time to fool around this way. He has work to do today. Every man should plant one tree for the next generation to see. If you have nothing to do, this tree should be planted by you. Adam and Eve had a little work to do in the Garden of Eden that grew for you. The forbidden fruit was too much temptation. They were driven out across many nations. Adam's sin threw him off the track. That's when he started bending his back with the, crustus, with the crudest tools of all. He started tilling the soil. Adam's family grew very big. Their appetites are like a king's. God gave modern machinery to lighten work. Impossible to feed our family and have time to quit work. The one talent man hid his talent in the ground before he quit and laid around. Find out what happened to him. His portion was pretty slim. I own this land, have a deed to it. A deed is only a lifetime lease on it. God owns the land, cattle, and the deer. When the death angel comes, we will leave it here. We are stewards, but just stand, but just and righteous stewards will receive rewards for their work. But who ever heard of rewards for them that shirk? Sure. A certain rich man retired. He didn't do what was required. God said, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall these things be? The young may die, the old must die. Four score and ten years won't leave many of us here. From dust thou art, to dust thou shalt return, was not spoken of the soul. What value do you place on your soul? Even on deathbed, something has been done or said that would bring some weaker soul safely back into the fold. Work, walk the straight and narrow way. Live for Jesus every day. On the broad, crooked path, that's all downhill. It's easy to slide straight into hell. <laughs> Did you write that? Yeah. You composed that? Here, now, here's the one about the early day, and I want to tell you about this one. Mm -hmm. I had a cousin in Alabama that she went to visit her son in New York City. He took her to visit Grandma Moses, and Grandma Moses she took seven lessons and painted a beautiful picture. Mm -hmm. And at 81 years old, she started writing portraits, cards and stuff. And she sent me a poem, so I wrote this one back to her, and she called me from Alabama. Oh, I ready to tie up on that and to get a call. Oh boy, this is a long one. Oh, it's just the one. Oh, you got two or three of them. Yeah, I've got three of them. You just want one. Give me the other. Okay. This is the first one. January 1st, 1893. On a cold and frosty morn in Sherman, Texas, I was born. When I opened my eyes, the world somehow didn't look at all like it does now. September the 22nd, they fired the gun. Even the Texas made the run. 160 acres of land was at the end for every man. When the covered wagon with family arrived at the stake, it looked like someone made a mistake. No house, barn, fences, water at all. Just the blue heaven covered it all. With the tall buffalo grass for a bed, they had a soft place to lay their head. But with a shovel and pick, a dugout was soon fixed. Yes, I lived in the horse and buggy days. They were crude in many ways. We traveled the ridge roads so the horses could pull the loads. I walked back of a rod-sod plow 
I walk back of a rod saw sod plow. No seat on them like we have now. Every third round, a gallon bucket rolled on the ground. Why was that? Well, put, put a rod through it, and you had holes in the bucket, and had seed in it. And you just tie it on every third round and to put that seed right where that plant was. I remember my father telling about that. I'd forgotten it. But I, I, I made me a bucket in Florida. He did, too. <laughs> This bucket scattered the seed that made a real crop of feed. This land was the very best without fertilization. It stood the test. In 1903, <clears throat> no crowd gathered around to see a Wright brother leave the ground. The people thought this an impossible feat. Man could only walk on his two feet. Are you taking my picture? You? <laughs> Oh, from 1912 to 1914, the people bought the Model T Ford. It was about all they could afford. $327 was the delivered price, but a horseless carriage was really nice. A solid tired chain-driven truck rolled down the road, but in three feet of plowed dirt, you had too much load. Hauling 30 buckets of wheat at 20 miles an hour, you were using 100% of your power. Let me go back and repeat that. Hauling 30 bushels of wheat at 20 miles an hour, you were using 100% of your power. You're using all the power you had to get, that, to get it done. That's right. 1917, 16 head of horses hooked four abreast, pulled the first wheat combine in the West. This combine had no bend. A wagon caught the wheat and hauled it in. The two-cylinder Titan tractor you cranked with a rope was soon in the fence corner. It was a joke, but improved tractors were soon made that put the horses in the shade. Franklin D. Roosevelt said he would make no millionaires. He sure didn't. He made billionaires. His borrowed prosperity created a debt the next 10 generations will have it yet. The liberal socialists inflated the dollar as big as a balloon, so they made a rocket and sent men to the moon. People say they have seen a man face on the moon, but they didn't find him. Came back too soon. With all the inventions to lighten man's load, he is still grumbling as he travels paved roads. And with all of man's tremendous speed, dissatisfaction is still in the lead. Today, I am 78 years young, enjoying my work and having lots of fun. During my short span of life, improvements came so fast, it's hard to remember which came last. I won my wife in a mule mobile. Later, Lucille was caught in a merry Oldsmobile. We didn't travel very fast, but she has been true to me all through the past. When I look back to the horse and buggy days, very little taxes I had to pay. Government didn't owe a dollar, so I didn't need to holler. A dollar wasn't 80% taxes to keep the government out of a deep hole. It was made of silver and backed up with pure gold. I went to the best picture shows for only five cents. A long list of things could be bought with 95 cents. The phonograph, radio, television came into play. Millions of cars, trucks, tractors, airplanes came to stay. I thank the good Lord for letting me live to see the many improvements he did give. Yes, thorns got in my path from day to day, but I just detoured another way as I traveled down life's road. I took Jesus with me to lighten the road, the load. That's good. That's really good. Well, I, I wrote that, but they called me from Alabama. Yes. <laughs> Do you have an extra copy of that? I may have. I'll let them see. Okay. You want one? Yes, sir. How long were you taking my picture. Right? The whole thing. The whole thing. What you hardly think. Huh? He took my picture reading that and put it on tape. 
If I'd have known you was done that, I might have tried your red a little better. <laughs> well, anything else you can think of? No. It's time to go eat, isn't it? Okay. Okay. Thank you.